By now, most of us are familiar with generating AI art using tools like Stable Diffusion and text to image prompts like this. You type in a prompt like Deadpool relaxing by the pool, you press generate, and you get back these amazing images just like this that hopefully resemble the prompt that you provided the system. But what if you could completely flip that idea on its head and instead take an image and generate a text prompt. That's exactly what the team at Midjourney did yesterday. Let's jump in and take a look at it. From the announcement in the Discord server, introducing describe for image to text on Midjourney. Use the describe command and upload an image to get four text prompts that try to describe the image. Click buttons underneath the command to generate images for each of the prompts. What better way to test this out than to jump in with a few images of our own and see how well this actually works in practice. Now to start, let's talk about how I think Midjourney might have pulled this off. You see, since they started the service, they've been collecting these mountains of data from all of the people that have been using the text prompts. So in this case, I have material design logo of a head with gears for an artificial intelligence company. And they spit back four images. And I think this is the really important part because if none of these images closely match the prompt and what I had expected from the results, I would come down here and I would press regenerate or I would go back and I would supply a slightly different prompt. But on the other hand, if one of these did closely match what I was expecting from the prompt, let's say number three, you're gonna go ahead and click upscale number three. That's gonna come back with the image and there are a couple things that can happen here. Either you're gonna download the image, or you might even favorite it. Clicking the favorite button would provide a very strong signal back to Midjourney that this text prompt closely matches this image. Now then over time with enough of this data, instead of doing text to image, you can flip that in the data set and train a model that's actually able to take images and generate the text prompts that are associated with them because it has so much reinforcement data saying that these images are closely related to these text prompts. It's a pretty brilliant approach and I'm guessing that's what they're doing on the back end, although I have no way of knowing that obviously. So in order to test this feature out, we're gonna go over to a site called Prompt Hero, prompthero.com. What they have is a whole bunch of images that have been created with various tools related to diffusion and stable diffusion, and they have the text prompts associated with them. So we can open up one of these images, like this one of this brisket stew, and you can see the original prompt that was used to generate this. Brisket stew is a hearty dish made with beef brisket. The brisket is a cut of meat from the chest of a cow. This is a really odd prompt. They actually sort of just described what beef brisket stew is, and it was able to generate an image. So what we can do is we can save this image, and we'll see if Midjourney is able to come up with something similar given the output. I'm gonna go through and select a handful of other images. I want generally different things. I want pictures of people, I want pictures of objects, things that I think it'll have an easy time figuring out and possibly a difficult time figuring out so that we have a good mixture of results to check from. Now all we have to do once we've got the Midjourney bot fired up is press slash describe, and then it takes an image as an input which we can upload from our computer. And why not go ahead and start with that beef stew? And once the image is uploaded, you just hit return, and then this is gonna generate several text prompts that hopefully describe the image in detail. Okay, so here are the four text prompt descriptions that it came back with. Number one is a bowl of beef soup with carrots and potatoes in the style of dark teal and dark amber, ink washed, Jewish culture themes, cut ripped, soft edges, dark brown and light amber, and then agfa clack, which I'm not exactly sure what that means. Number two, three, and four, these are all very similar. I will notice that at the end of these, each one of them has kind of a, a word that I'm not familiar with. So less nabis, datis, and then this one doesn't, but it does in the middle have nush lard. These are actually linked, hyperlinked, and I wonder what these mean. Oh, it's going to take me to a Google search. Uh, I don't know why that is. Why would they have a hyperlink within the actual text prompt that's returned? That's a little bit odd, but you know, we'll go with it. Now, the next thing we do after we've selected one of these that we want, you just simply click the number below the image that represents that prompt. So we'll go ahead and generate all four of these and see how closely it resembles the original image. Here are the results from number one. It gets a general theme. So you can see what it was going with. It is a stew. It's generally the same color texture. It has the carrots and beef in it. I think it misses a little bit of the photorealism of the first one. So let's see what else we got back. Here's the second prompt. This one's actually, it's really nice, very photorealistic. This is something you could actually use in like a photo for a restaurant almost. It's interesting, this one didn't have the description of the color of the bowl, but I think you could come back in here and modify the prompt 
and easily add that and get a, a pretty good result. Again, most of these are fairly nice and it at least knew that it's a bowl of beef stew in every single one of these that we've seen so far. And for the fourth one, again, it kind of nailed that it's a bowl of beef stew. This doesn't have cut up carrots, but again, I think you could modify the prompt. Not too bad for a first pass. I think all four of these prompts are workable as a way to get back to that source image. So let's try something else. All right, here's our second image. And if we take a look at it, I know from Prompt Hero that this is actually an image of a turkey with some sort of flower headdress on it and then eagle wings spread in the background. Now, interestingly, all of the prompts here, except for the fourth one, pick up that this is an image of an eagle with a headdress covered in flowers. And you can see that that's represented in these first three. And then the fourth one goes off to name an artist, and then it says, in the style of lifelike avian illustration. So at least all picked it up that it's a bird. It's interesting that they almost all thought that it was an eagle rather than a turkey. And generating the images for all three of these, you can see that these are actually quite nice. I think it still captures the essence of the original image in a really nice way. Now I would say some of these are actually nicer than the original image, but that of course is subjective as this is art. So it's hard to actually say that. All right, and here's our third image from Prompt Hero. I thought this was a really cool one and it might stress the system just a little bit more and the fact that it's really difficult to describe sort of the face paint that this man has on and the overall aesthetic of the image. But Mid Journey says it's a man with blue and red paint adorning an African facial scar. Um, an indigenous man is wearing a blue and red head tattoo. So it's interesting it picked up. It thinks it's a tattoo rather than face paint. Third one, a man with blue and purple paint is on a red background. I think Actually mentioning the background is a nice touch. And then number four, image of a man with blue eyes and face paint. I actually don't know that that one's going to capture it quite the way that the other three do. So let's go ahead and generate an image for the first three. All right, here's the first set of images that came back. And wow, these are pretty spectacular. You can see all the dramatic lighting effects. They're very photorealistic and it really captured the essence of that red and blue face paint. Now, interestingly enough, if you look at this last one, it almost has a Spider-Man-esque vibe to it. And I noticed in the prompt, it actually mentioned Stan Lee, the creator of Spider-Man and some of the movies associated with him. So I wonder if that's where it picked that up from that color scheme. Looking at the second set of images, again, these are very nice as well. I think again, in that fourth image, you can kind of see that Spider-Man vibe. And I'm curious if it picked that up. Yep, Marvel comic. So it's sort of picking up some of those design cues from some of the wording in these prompts. And then we'll look at the last one here as well. This is probably the farthest from the original, but still a really cool result that I'd be happy to go ahead and mess around with a little bit more. Very cool. Out of these three, I'd say the first one was probably the most spot on. And I think by just modifying this prompt, you could get something very similar to the original image. All right, let's jump on to the next one. All right, now I selected this next image because it's a picture of Morgan Freeman in front of a planet. It has this cool artistic vibe to it, but I wanted to see if Mid Journey would be smart enough to pick up that this was a photo of Morgan Freeman specifically. And let's see, number one, a portrait of an old man in front of a planet. No mention of Morgan Freeman. Oh my God. All right, number two, Morgan Freeman's art. Okay, so it's Morgan Freeman's art, but it still mentioned that it was Morgan Freeman. That blows me away. Number three, an older man standing next to a planet. Number four, a picture of a man in front of a planet. Okay, let's go ahead and generate a couple of these. I'm really curious to see if it comes back with Morgan Freeman in any of the images. All right, here's the first set. All right, it's an older man in front of a planet. Not bad. It has a very similar lighting, aesthetic, kind of design qualities to it, but it's not Morgan Freeman. Number two. Wow. Okay. So this actually resembles Morgan Freeman. I don't know about the glasses in a couple of these, but you can see where it's sort of going with that. Okay. Not bad. I'm, I'm pretty impressed. And then the last one. Okay, so again, it copies over some of the design aesthetic, not Morgan Freeman, but hey, I'm just blown away that it was able to identify the actual person in the photos. That's pretty cool. All right, let's switch it up a little bit and we'll do an interior design one, but this isn't just any interior design. It's, it's kind of this futuristic modern take on an interior space with all these various plants. So we have a living room full of plants with large windows in the style of realism with surrealistic elements. So it's pretty cool that it brought that up. Concrete brutalism, National Geographic photo, figuratively textured, 
So some of these are pretty good. All right, let's see what it comes back with when we run these prompts through and generate the images. All right, let's take a look. Wow, it sort of nailed the interior here that it's these high ceilings and this concrete interior, some of the surrealistic aspects of it. I'd say this is pretty darn good. Let's look at the next one. This, I can definitely see some of the elements. I don't think it's quite as close to the first one. This is sort of a post-apocalyptic overgrown situation of some brutalist interior but still pretty cool and then we'll see the last one similarly this has more of an overgrown aesthetic to it than the original image did but i'd say based on this this first prompt is actually pretty close it has a lot of the same design elements and greenery uh, while still keeping some of the color palette and the overall look really really cool this next image i chose something a little bit more abstract it's his image of this crystal with this kind of prismatic color scheme to it. And it says a stylized white crystal with colored crystals are shown in the style of graphic designer poster art, a colorful crystal artwork of a multicolored sculpture, infinity in the style of crystalline geological forms. I'm curious what that'll come back with, with that first word infinity. Number four, a glass with colors all scattered around. We'll see how that comes back as well. So let's do these. These sound a little bit more interesting. Let's do one, three, and four. Wow. Okay. Check out number three, for example, this is even the background. And I think it has a very similar look to the original, but all of these are pretty darn close. It has that multicolored crystalline structure. But man, I think number three down here in the left, that's really close to the original. That's pretty mind blowing. Just from a text description, we'll look at this second one. Yeah, I didn't think these would be as close to the original as, as some of these others. Um, this one has this sort of, it, it almost looks like a world or a globe that's exploding. It's a really cool image, don't get me wrong. I just don't think it closely follows the original aesthetic. And same with this one. This one's just sort of colored pieces of glass scattered around. Really cool image again, but just not what we were looking for. That first one though, look at that. I mean, that's pretty spot on. All right, I chose this one because it's really abstract. It does have this Nike logo in one of the shoes, but other than that, it seems like this would be a really difficult one just for me to describe, much less for an image generator to describe. So it says, number one, Nike shoes. So. There you go. It picked up the swoosh in the shoe and it knows that it's Nike shoes are shown painted with flowers in the style of surreal dreamlike imagery. Two pictures of two sho shoes is shown with flower petals all over them. An image showing two shoes with flower petals on all over them. A set of sneakers and golden flowers. And you can see this one also says Nike right down in here. I don't think any of the others in the middle do. So Let's do number one and we'll go with number two and four. All right, we have some results. I picked up the right aspect ratio and everything here. Uh, it doesn't look too much like the original. I get where it's going though. It has a similar sort of aesthetic. It has similar flowers in it. You can see where it was going with some of this for sure. Here's the next set. Here's Nike shoes in all of these. So that's pretty spot on there. And again, it looks like it has similar design aesthetic as the original as well. Let's check out this last one. This one's a little bit more colorful than the original. So I knew this would be a really difficult image to sort of pick up, but I think it didn't do a bad bit there. It did pick up on the flowers that are in the image. And some of these picked up that they were a pair of Nike shoes as well. Tip of the hat to the team over at Mid Journey. Not only is Mid Journey V5 really impressive in the world of diffusion, an AI image generation, but they're also a small team. There's just 11 people working at the entire organization. Look at the stuff that they've been able to come up with. This is a really impressive first entry, and this is something that just launched yesterday. So I anticipate that this is going to get even better over time. If you'd like a free alternative stable diffusion AI image generator, be sure to check out my link down in the description. That's my own service that I've been offering to people where you can jump into my discord server and try out Stable Diffusion for yourself free of charge. Now, most of you are not subscribed to my channel yet, so be sure and hit that subscribe and that like button so that YouTube knows I'm doing a good job and so you can stay up to date on all the latest in AI news. As always, I'm Brian Lovett. This is All Your Tech AI. Thank you so much for joining. We'll see you next time.